Welcome to Cauldron of Worlds. Episode 2, Three Guides You'll Always Need. Welcome to Cauldron Worlds. I'm Chad Corey. In this episode, we're going to be looking at continuing our macro to micro approach to world building by taking a look at an aspect of world creation I always do for everything I undertake, and that is the creation of three handy reference guides. I find myself going back to these guides time and again whenever I write, using them and adding to them as I write new tales and flesh out various aspects of the world. With them, it's easier to maintain a sense of believability to what is created as well as cohesion to the overall story of whatever else is being created. Readers and reviewers will appreciate it, as will those who might team up with you in creating such things later on. These three documents are as follows. A glossary, nomenclature, and pronunciation guide. Let's start with the glossary. Fantasy is notorious for creating new words. After a while, keeping track of all of them can become somewhat daunting, and if more people get involved creating and or overseeing things, as is often the case with other forms of media, such as animation, film, and the like, the greater the need for a uniform source of reference. The glossaries I create are pretty simple affairs with the newly coined title, name, or phrase listed alphabetically, followed by a definition. How large this glossary can get can vary. My, pr my preference is to put every new word into it, but others might get by with only documenting the major words instead. When a world is particularly big, like the case with Trollodrim, then I'll also have references inside those definitions, those being italicized words that let me know they too are unique words I can find elsewhere in the glossary. And you might not want to stop with unique words either. You might want to document important events or times in the glossary as well, allowing for an easy access by everyone seeking for some basic and uniform information on the subject. Famous wars or ages or times in the historical record, calendar, religious events, and even particularly famous places or people are also possible additions to any potential glossary. Next, let's look at a nomenclature. Part of keeping your words consistent and believable is a uniform approach to how language works, especially when there is an introduction of several new words into the lexicon. What sort of language rules do these words follow, if any? Is there any adjective form of this creature's name? What do you call a citizen from Kingdom A? You get the idea. Overall, I tend to keep things simple. Each word is listed alphabetically in various categories I've created around various topics. This usually consists of kingdoms, cosmology, gods, monsters, different races, religions, nations, and the like. Each listing has a space for the plural and adjective form where applicable. For example, Trollodron is the name of the world. It doesn't have a plural form, but does have an adjective form, Trollodroan. Troll is the singular name for the corrupted giants that live on Trollodron. Its plural form is trolls, and trollish is its adjective form. Again, what you add to this list is really up to you. Whatever you thought might be best served by having some handy reference information on hand. Now let's talk about the pronunciation guide. While this might be an afterthought for some, how things sound is a rather important matter. Important because you can give insight into aspects of the various languages used in your world, but also provide fun ways to help bring things into better play in life. Crafting lyrics for epic poetry or songs, for example, could benefit from a clear understanding of how any new words sound. Making a play off of two words that sound similar but have different meanings is another possibility. The biggest benefit, of course, is when it comes to audio ventures, both in the realm of audiobooks or media production in general. If you want any narrator, voice actor, or actor to be able to say things the quote-unquote right way, then having a document defining that quote-unquote right way is always good to have on hand. Now, how you go about this is totally up to you. Some might want to get real technical and break into the dictionary for the right and proper marks for declaring such words correctly, Others might want a more relaxed, phonetically simple version instead. I use the more simpler version myself. It's just easier for me since I don't know all the proper marks and I've 
found others really don't know them either, so it sort of defeats the purpose of having the document to begin with. But it is easier for me and others with this simple approach, which helps further assure a better chance and a clearer chance of proper pronunciation being achieved. As to what I list and how I list them, I actually follow the same pattern and layout I use for the nomenclature guide, letting each be a sort of joint reference document for the other. This not only helps me with my own efforts in looking things up and keeping things straight, but provides a level of uniformity for others to make better use of as well. And I think that's where we're going to end things today. Before we go, however, I want to pass along that I'm looking at also finding ways to incorporate questions into this podcast. So if you had any world-building related questions or on something I might have said in previous podcasts, then feel free to send them to cauldron at chadcorey.com. And that's C-A-U-L-D-R-O-N at chadcorey, C-H-A-D-C-O-R-R-I-E dot com. And I'll make a point to see about where I can cover them in an episode. Or maybe even look at having a whole episode perhaps be set aside just to cover them if enough warrant it. Next time, I'll be getting into the next part of the creation process, covering another topic i have rather fond of and which has helped me a great deal with my own world building and projects in general. Until then, happy world building. This podcast is copyright Chad Corey. All rights reserved.